If you've ever felt overwhelmed by the number of options offered by Olight, well, hopefully this video will help. We're gonna make a top 10 list of what I think are the best lights from Olight for daily carry. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, Olight makes more than 50 different models currently. So we're actually gonna narrow this band quite a bit and we're gonna avoid the specialized flashlights. And those are gonna include gun lights, bike lights, dedicated headlamps, and also lights designed for throwing at a very long distance primarily. We're gonna narrow into the things that you can carry with you that have a variety of different light outputs to be used for different situations. Being just shy of the top 10, it's worth mentioning these three flashlights at 11, 12, and 13. The first one is the brand new Warrior Nano. And you know what it comes down to? This is the exact same dimension in the pocket and it carries almost identically to the Warrior Mini 3. I can't really find a discernible difference when carrying it and I'd rather have the higher output and longer run times along with the, well, more substantial grip that the Warrior Mini 3 actually offers me. The other thing is it has a clip that allows me to go with the button up and sticking out just enough for an easy grab out of the pocket with a perfect position where this doesn't really do that. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I think there is a person out there that will absolutely prefer the shorter and slightly lighter uh, Nano, but at 500 lumens less and just a little bit less of everything, I just have not found a reason to carry it. And it's for that reason that it's just slightly outside of the top 10. And in the same vein, the Baton 3 Pro is the same deal. Now, this kind of suffers a little bit by being a little bit older. It doesn't have the updated button, which is made of metal and more recessed. And uh, the tail switch is such a bonus. It's such a good bonus. The other thing is they had to remove the sensor in the newest version of the Baton 3 Pro, whereas the new Warrior Mini 3 has the perfected version of that sensor with all of the proper setup. So it really knows exactly when to downgrade automatically. And for that reason, once again, it is kind of outclassed. And so these two basically suffer in comparison to this flashlight. Now, the last one is going to be a very popular one, and that is the i5R. Now, I don't want you guys to get me wrong. It's still a good flashlight, but it has a couple things that, well, make it fall out of the top 10. Number one is it suffers when compared to its competitors who are now running a combination of standard AAA uh, double A as well as standard 14500, something that this does not have. What I mean by that is this comes with a proprietary lithium ion battery that runs at 2.7 volts. That is a unusual voltage for a battery when all of the available ones run at 3.6, which also offers them much higher output, in some cases upwards of 1,000 lumens, where this is rocking a max of 350. So beyond that, it's also a little bit more expensive than those flashlights tend to be, and it is for these two reasons that it is falling off the list, although it is also an excellent flashlight. Now I have a number of other lights that I'm not gonna show and I will be putting reasonings for why they did not make in the top 10 list down in the description. So you can actually see the entire list of available lights that fit within the criteria that I've set. With that, top 10 time. Now coming in at number 10 is gotta be the Warrior 3S. Now this is a tail switch and side switch enabled flashlight. It also will tell you which output setting it is in along with how much battery you have left right there on the button. It has the ability to charge magnetically as well and works with a proprietary 21700. Now this just sneaks into my list and in some ways for some people I think this could be as high as number one if you're the kind of person who likes to carry a fully capable, large, long lasting, very bright flashlight. But for me personally, I never could justify carrying it when the Warrior Mini 3 just gets me there a little bit easier. And at least this can be attached to a hat where the Warrior 3S is definitely not going to work. You're gonna, it's gonna fall right off. And it's just frankly too long for it. It probably doesn't even need a double-sided clip in the first place, if we're being honest. But still, 
This is a fantastic light. It has a built-in sensor to keep it from accidentally burning holes. If you turn it on accidentally, it does have lockout and it has a lot of the same user interface features that we find on a lot of different flashlights. We're not really gonna go into that in this video, but you can see how those work in the manuals for each individual light. And there's tons and tons of reviews detailing exactly how they work. Coming in at number nine is the Perrin Mini 2. This is a very, very versatile flashlight. Because it is so small, it absolutely carries well in the pocket for EDC. It has a magnetic tail that can be used with the O-Link, which will let you have it as a key dangler, which is really awesome in how I use it. And it has a couple hidden features, including red light, which honestly, I haven't used that much, but I know a lot of people that love having it. So it still functions as a way to preserve your night vision if you're using it as a headlamp. And uh, what it comes with, with its strap, actually allows it to attach to a variety of different flashlights. So it is a really, really good system. So not only will buying it give you a headlamp plus an EDC flashlight, it works hands-free without a hat, which is really nice. If you want to stand it on a table, you can use it just like that. And it also, because the headband works a certain way, you can actually use it on the side of your head with a bunch of different lights as well. So you get a lot of value for getting something like the Perrin Mini 2, and it's just a really, really good light. Number eight is the Seeker 4. Now this is a big surprise for me, and I'm still kind of just amazed at how one little thing can really improve a flashlight. The Seeker 3 and the past generations held absolutely no interest, but because of this charging base built into the holster, this light has become incredibly useful and is now my dedicated truck light because if I wanna charge another flashlight, I can simply take this out, put it in the center console, slot in my other flashlight and charge it while I'm on the drive or this one, or this one. They all fit perfectly. And frankly, you can use the holster if you want to, to carry any of these flashlights. So because of that, it's pretty amazing. You can also get a horizontal holster. This thing has a maximum output over 4,000 lumens, and the run times are truly, truly obscene with this light. But to top this off, what makes it so nice is it's built to auto lock the moment it slots into this holster. So if I have it out here, turn it on, turn it off, right? Perfect. I didn't lock it out. But once I put it in the case, I can't turn it on. Now, if I, if I, let's say I put it on turbo and then I slot it into the case, it will automatically drop to 300 lumens. These little added features that they've made with this light have really improved it to the point where I almost can't not include it. And it's just like many of the other lights that we'll see on this list, which yes, they have a proprietary charging technology, but then they have a way to charge with type C built into them. And so for that reason, yeah, the Seeker 4, absolutely something to consider in a very specific context. And number seven is their keychain flashlight, the i1R2 Pro. Now this is a really great little flashlight that has a variety of different color combinations, as you can see, different materials like titanium and aluminum and more. But what's great is it's very simple. There is a five lumen mode and there is a 180 lumen mode. And that's usually enough to get pretty much anything done and anyone can figure it out. It's just simply screwing it down if it makes it brighter. And built in is a type C charging port. This cap does not come off, so you don't have to worry about losing it. It's just a very, very simple and very easy to use light. And so for that reason, I mean, you can't go wrong with this. It's a great gift, a great stocking stuffer, and people who don't carry flashlights, this is a very good choice because then they see the usage of it, how it can be useful to have besides the one that's on their cell phone. And even the 180 lumens on this is far, far brighter than the one you're gonna get on your cell phone light. So I highly recommend checking these out, but best to wait till these are actually included as part of a sale where you actually can get them potentially free with any other purchase. Coming in at number six is the Baton 3 Pro Max. I didn't expect to like this light so much, but because I tend to use it as much as I do, it has almost fully retired the Baton 3 Pro, which is quite a bit smaller. It is also a different battery type. So 18650 here, 21700 here, much higher outputs, 
much longer run times. So this light is also quite a bit shorter than similar lights with similar batteries, like the Warrior 3S. And it's because of this that it's actually able to work on a hat. It's probably the biggest light that I've been able to do that with. And uh, I have not had any issues, which is quite surprising to me. Very, very nice and very useful when working up close. It does have a very floody beam pattern. And because of that, I really, really like it for being used in the actual shop or when I'm walking around and doing different projects. I have a lot of different metallic places where I can stick this and then use it as my dedicated work light for that period of time. And the run times are truly phenomenal on this light. I usually carry it inside a holster, which is made by Tail of Knives and it works perfectly alongside my Gerber center drive and prying tool. That's just a really good light. I can't recommend enough. It just has a little bit more oomph than you will get from some of these other flashlights like the Baton 3 Pro. Highly recommended if you're wanting something that has a, just a little bit more. Now, number five is under my hand here, but before we get there, I wanna talk briefly about purchasing Olights. Do not ever buy an Olight from Amazon. If you do, you are ripping up your money for no good reason. And there's a lot of people who do. I don't know why, I guess they don't know that you can buy things for at least 20% and sometimes as high as 40% off every single time Olight has a sale, like they do right now. And just here's an example. Look at some of these sale items. You can see that you're basically not getting the maximum if you don't wait till one of these sales, which come every single month. Once you do, you're set, and you tend to get free items just for making a purchase during that period of time. So please, before you go and make a purchase, just wait. Now is a good time because there's actually a sale going on, but if you're watching this and it's not a sale, just wait till the next one. You'll thank me, trust me. There will be a lot more available and a lot more options and probably new lights that you didn't even know existed. Now. Coming in at number five is going to be the O-Clip. Now this is a brand new light that's come out by Olight and they haven't talked about it all that much. This is basically my new favorite keychain flashlight from Olight. And I didn't include it on my keychain flashlight list because I didn't realize it was one until just recently. And uh, it's fantastic. It has a magnetic uh, clip that is very, very easy to use. It has a standard user interface that we're very familiar with, hole press for moonlight, and it also has standard output up to 300 lumens. Now, in addition to a standard white, it also has red light. So a double press will take you to red, and a hole press from there will take you to blinking red, which is actually quite useful if you are running in the dark. You can clip this to the back of your collar, and it will let people know that you are present and walking on the street. So I really, really like this light quite a bit. It also has a Type-C charging port, so no proprietary charging here. It is IPX7 waterproof, which is really quite good. And uh, yeah, what else? Oh, the magnet, check this thing out. It has a magnetic attachment right here on the back. And a friend of mine showed me a trick that you can do with things like your belt. You can kind of stick it on if need be. He actually had it attached to a belt loop right next to it so he could then use it hands-free whenever he wanted some light, which I think is a nice little touch. Kind of a cool idea to incorporate into your EDC some way to use it hands-free. And this light has a lot of options. In fact, I didn't really quite understand until my wife who was working out at the time, was like, wow, I don't have to worry about putting this in my pocket, it's easy to clip. And for that reason, I think that this is going to end up being incredibly popular, and I have to say is definitely deserving of the top five. Coming in at number four is going to be the Arkfeld family of flashlights. Now there are actually three different versions, but I have to include them kind of together, otherwise it would kind of populate the entire list. There are three versions. The first one, was released with a laser and white light with a maximum output of 1000 lumens and a one-way clip. Now all of these have the magnetic charging base and are IPX7. Really, really cool lights that have either a primary light or a secondary function for the smaller types. Now this was then followed up with the UV version, which has a reversible clip and a little bit slimmer profile 
and has a UV light along with a standard white light. So another excellent flashlight with a similar user interface to all the others that we've seen so far with the footprint on this thing. This barely comes in thicker than a standard, in fact, almost exactly the same width as a AAA powered flashlight. When you carry this, it almost completely disappears and is for that reason that I, I absolutely love carrying this thing. It is one of my most used flashlights, if I'm being honest. And the new kit on the block is probably gonna end up being in the similar vein. Although it is quite different because it has both the UV as well as the laser and the white. And it has a couple other upgrades. Longer run time, much, much brighter laser compared to its older brethren. And um, it also has a brighter UV light. But this is something that's particularly cool that's worth mentioning. When you have the laser on, if you double press, you actually get both the laser and the light. And you can hold press to cycle through to get a different outputs to go along with it. Now, if you're doing an inspection of some sort, you're looking at a distance, you might need both simultaneously. So for that reason, this might end up being, well, a very, very popular flashlight indeed. And it has the reversible clip that we get from the UV version. So the combination is just fantastic. And once again, it's actually not that much thicker than a AAA powered light. In fact, almost exactly the same. It's just a little bit wider and a little bit longer than the other lights, but you get a little bit more from it. 1300 lumens versus the 1000. Just really, really good. Not much more to say. Coming in at number three is the Warrior Mini 3. Now this has three different generations of lights and they've made improvements along the way from the original to the number two which had a little bit of an issue with the sensor, but otherwise amazing and just a little bit bigger. And then finally, we have the Warrior Mini 3, which basically has everything that I ever wanted. An improved button, a better bezel, a improved sensor. The button on the side is harder to press accidentally, a better clip. They basically nailed it with this light. And it is my most carried flashlight by a pretty sizable margin. This is like the jack of all trades for me. A lot like the Arkfeld, which has certain type of versatility. This has versatility in the sense that you can use it on your head with low light situations. You can use it in a defensive nature. It has kind of all of the things as a light. This is the basically the multi-tool equivalent for me. And for that reason, I absolutely adore it. And I can carry it if I want with the tail up, which I would do if I'm walking around at night, or just leave it in my pocket, deep carry if I want to. So it just has so much versatility. I did an entire video on this, talking about whether this was better than past generations, so I will leave a link to that as well. But let's just say that, yeah, this is a very good light, and is definitely one of those, not one and done, but is one of the biggest reasons to incorporate the magnetic charging system from Olight, by using the battery that they have, they're able to shrink the diameter of this light substantially, essentially transferring the information from the tail to the head through the battery. And that is the only reason you're able to get something so compact and so versatile as the Warrior Mini 3. Coming in at number two, and it could be number one, I don't know, they go back and forth, is the Baton 3. Specifically, the Baton 3 Premium, which comes with this wireless charging case. Now this is already a very impressive flashlight. It's very, very tiny. Once again, able to achieve that because of the proprietary battery that functions kind of as a way to charge from the tail. So you don't need that secondary internal liner. And it has a massive 1200 lumen output out of a light that is very, very tiny. How tiny? There's the Baton 3 Pro. There's the Baton 3 Pro Max. I mean, here is the Warrior 3S. So you can see this is a very, very small flashlight by comparison. Very, very light also. And also has really good run times as they upgraded it from past generations. I think the charging case though is what really makes it so good. When I go on trips, this is my travel flashlight. And in addition to the charge that I get in the light, this thing will charge it an additional three and a half times, approximately. I, I usually get about three full charges, which means that if I have this light, along with one in the case, all I do is swap them out every day and I never have to even plug this thing in. If I'm being honest, I, I think 
even in a week's trip, using it every single night. I think I got through a week and a I got through one and a half charges or two charges in some cases, but never was needed to charge the case a second time. I, I think that this light, more than any other flashlight made by Olight, justifies the magnetic charging system. With, if you're going to start somewhere and you're not sure whether the proprietary system makes any sense, it, it seems quite logical to go with something that has a built-in Type-C port that you can work with. So whether it's the Baton 3 or something like the Seeker 4, both of these lights offer Type-C charging, and because of that, they have both options. And I think that this is something to consider when you're maybe picking your first light. You can't go wrong with this one, though, as an EDC flashlight because it is so ridiculously tiny. And yeah, get the charging case. You'll thank me. Coming in at number one has to be the i3T. Now, this has not changed for me. This has always been my number one flashlight, even though it's not the one I carry the most. Maybe, maybe just because I've graduated from it, but I think a lot of people would start their journey with a flashlight like this. First of all, the price. Base price for this comes in around $20. And usually when they have new colors and they're on sale, which they might be right now, they can be well under that. Somewhere close to the $12 range I've seen at times. So it's really worth checking out what they have during different months, because you're gonna get all these different flavors, including these limited edition variants, like this one with the sprinkles, which is really, really cool. They have them in different materials like steel and carbon fiber over top of an aluminum core, which is quite cool. They had copper, they have titanium, you name it. They got it all. And this is a very simple flashlight. So just two modes, 15 lumens and 180 lumens, and that's gonna pretty much get you everything you need on a daily basis. And if you're willing to carry this on attached to your pocket, then maybe you upgrade from there. But this is a really good starting point and it's a great gift to pretty much anyone. And it's for that reason, it remains number one and I cannot recommend it enough. Here are my top 10 Olight flashlights. Now, I would guess that most of you are going to organize them a little bit differently than I would, and I would love to know how you would rate them yourself. So in addition to my reasoning for all of the lights here, as well as the ones that didn't quite make the list, I'm also going to include the text version of the names for each light. So if you want to copy paste that and reorganize them in a way that makes sense to you, I would love to see what you think. Now, this video is actually part of a series of videos where we cover different categories of EDC gear. And if you want to see the others, there's a playlist right over here. As always, thank you for your time, and we'll talk again soon.